Good morning. Welcome to this edition of View on Africa, titled Tackling Corruption Through Criminal Justice. My name is Gareth Newham, and I head the Justice and Violence Prevention Program in Pretoria, South Africa. Today being Nelson Mandela Day, it's worth remembering that as a lawyer, Nelson Mandela really appreciated the importance of the rule of law as a key foundation to a strong and vibrant democracy and said as much in a number of his interviews. And that is what we'll be talking about today. The challenge we've had over the last 10 years with what was called the project of state capture has been to witness the deterioration of the criminal justice system. The key system that has been established by our constitution to ensure that all people are held equally before the law in South Africa. Today, very few people really believe that that is the case. Many people think that the key challenge that faces our new president, Sil Ramaphosa, is to simply replace the senior leadership of the various criminal justice and state security agencies. And of course, we've seen some of that taking place. We have a new head of the Directorate for Priority Crimes Investigation. We have uh, a new acting or new head of the State Security Agency. We've seen a new appointment to the most critical, uh, one of the most critical divisions of the South African Police Service, Crime Intelligence. So there's some movement there. However, while it is absolutely critical and necessary to replace those that were appointed into the criminal justice system for reasons other than promoting the rule of law, it won't be sufficient to both fight the problem of corruption that we face now in the short term today, or prevent state capture from influencing the criminal justice system in the future. So what I'll be talking about briefly is what should be done if we want to ensure that we build a set of institutions that can ensure that corruption can be effectively tackled. We look very good on paper. Ultimately, when the United Nations Convention of, uh, Against Corruption report on South Africa was released, it showed South Africa really does have a large number of laws, policies, and good institutions, at least on paper, that we shouldn't really be having a problem of corruption. However, the reality is somewhat different. Uh, the years of misrule by our former president has seen big deterioration in the ability of the criminal justice system to improve public safety, whether it's evidenced by dramatic increases in the murder rate, which has gone up 13% since 2012, or similarly a almost 40% increase in armed attacks across the country in the same time, pe time period, despite increased budgets in the police and in the criminal justice system, we have also seen a large amount of evidence coming out about corruption. Uh, as has been estimated by, by our current Minister of Private Enterprises that as much as 100 billion rand may have been stolen through the state, pro uh, state capture project and spirited out of the country. Money that is desperately needed to fund programs to improve the lives of our poorest and vulnerable citizens. It's for this reason that arguably we are seeing an increase in VAT We've seen a very slow and uh, underperforming economy and persistently high levels of, of, of unemployment, poverty and inequality. A hundred billion rand could go a long way to improving the lives of most South Africans. If we are to be able to recover that money, ensure that this never happens again, we really need to start improving our criminal justice system. And it will not just be improving the leadership. The leadership is critical because we need capable men and women of impeccable integrity of the necessary skills and experience to drive a reform program. But it must be understood and appreciated that the criminal justice system in South Africa, whether by design or through inexperience, has always faced serious problems. For example, back in 1994-95, when the framers of the Constitution were setting up the powers that gave the President, they did not think that a President would not appoint the best possible man or woman to head the National Prosecuting Authority. Or the best possible man or woman to run the police. So they didn't put any constraints or any criteria about how that should happen. And so what we've seen for repeatedly over a number of years now is that appointments to these positions have been done primarily for political or personal reasons and very little to do with the ability of that individual to really strengthen the police or the prosecuting authority to ensure that the criminal justice system is as effective as it can be. 
political decisions have been influ politi politics has been influencing the criminal justice system since early on in our democracy. The Truth and Reconciliation Commission raised hundreds of cases where people who committed serious human rights violations and other crimes against people during apartheid did not get amnesty, were not prosecuted. Tons of illegal weapons were spirited into KwaZulu-Natal, weapons that continue to be used in political killings and crime to this day. People involved in that were never prosecuted or arrested. So from the very early stages of our democracy, there's been problems with decisions being taken for political reasons and not based on the evidence and the laws before those who run the prosecuting authority or the investigating agencies. So this is not something that just happened under our former president. This is something that has been an ongoing and persistent problem and the examples of it right through the last 20 or more years of our democracy. So what we need to do now is when we have the right capable leadership in charge of our criminal justice system, we need to say what are the short term initiatives and more medium to long term interventions that need to take place to ensure that the criminal justice system can start be performing the way it should and so that we can get on top of the corruption problem. For example, last year in 2017, there, was only, there were only 18 South Africans and one foreign national arrested and charged in terms of the Prevention and Combating of Corruption Act. And in that year, there was only one conviction for an amount of 2,000 Rand using that piece of legislation, PRECA. PRECA was designed and passed by Parliament specifically to make it easier for the state to investigate and prosecute corruption. For example, there is a criminal case against former SAR or suspended SARS boss, South African Revenue Service head, Tom Ayani, because apparently, despite having hard evidence of, sus of suspicious corrupt activity by those below him, fellow colleagues, he did not report this to the Hawks and took no action, uh, despite hard evidence in a Financial Intelligence Center report until many months later after the issue became public. That is covered by the Prevention and Combating of Corruption Act as a corrupt act. And to date, we have seen absolutely no action criminally being taken against him, nor against a whole host of other people where there is certainly sufficient evidence of involvement in corruption and state capture. So when we have the right people in charge of our South African Police Service, of our Hawks, as we currently do, and of the National Prosecuting Authority, which hopefully will happen sometime soon, their first step is to see how to improve the capacity in the short term. For example, many people have been forced out or have left all these agencies because they did not like what was happening around them. When they started to see the, people, the leadership being involved in political decisions, uh, not taking action against key people involved in corruption, taking action against people who are fighting corruption, they left. And that capacity is crucial to get back. So if, an initial short-term intervention, for example, could be for the heads of these various agencies to approach good skilled investigators from the Hawks, from the police, good prosecutors who left, and ask them to come back uh, and make sure that coming back is worthwhile. There's also an importance to incentivize current investigators and prosecutors. Make sure that there are performance bonuses and ways of rewarding those men and women in our criminal justice agencies when they are dedicated to arresting and convicting those involved in state capture and related corruption. So that it's not just a, uh, something that is not seen as whether you do it or not, it's a good or a bad thing. We do need to start looking at um, issues of performance indicators. So it shouldn't be how many cases you close, but the more senior the person you convict, the greater amount of money that's involved, the more likely you can get a performance bonus. So you need to see that kind of incentive in the, in the system. There needs to be greater partnerships between the investigators and the Hawks and the prosecuting authority and the private sector where a lot of very good skills involved in investigating forensically cases of commercial crime and corruption and fraud is available. People should be seconded to work on teams or on particular cases, particularly very complex cases where it might need a number, they might need a number of analysts to work together with investigators and prosecutors to identify where money is and where the evidence is to make sure that very powerful people are eventually hauled before our courts. Similarly, because so much money seems to have been taken out of the country, we need to start developing relationships with other countries that have good capacity and good laws to trace the money and to ensure that they can tell us where that money is, who's involved, and help us using their legal systems get that money back. 
So those are quite quick and short-term initiatives that we can take to try to start trying to improve that figure of only one conviction of a South African under the PRECA in the last year. We'd like to see that go up and of course we don't want to see lots of low level officials. We want to see powerful politicians. We want to see people who are premiers, people who are cabinet ministers, former and current, their family members. Of course the Guptas need to be held accountable um, and so forth. Those are the kinds of ways in which the public of South Africa will know that people are take, the, the government is finally taking corruption seriously and the state capacity needs to be proved in the short term to do that. In the longer term, we need to make sure that we don't have a situation where in the future, if for some reason we get a, a president who again is not concerned with the well-being of the people of this country as much as they're concerned with their own private wealth and power, that the system is inoculated, that the organizations in the, such as the police and the NPA have a strong professional culture and ethos that avoids people from being influenced by political decision making and that it's very difficult for the president and politicians to interfere. So we need, for example, to look at longer reform initiatives. Right now, the South African Police Service Act is being redrafted. It's outdated. It has not been updated since, uh, in its entirety since 1995, before the, uh, uh, the Constitution. Uh, but we need to start seeing that the very clear comp uh, guidelines in the Act that shows the President how to appoint a new National Commissioner in a process that is merit-based, that is transparent, and that makes sure that only the best possible man or woman is appointed to the post of National Commissioner or any other senior top management person in the police. We need to look and review and scrap re ministerial regulations that allow for political interference or allow the National Commission of Police, for example, to make appointments without assessing people. For example, last year, there were as many as 80 appointments made by the National Commission without assessing the suitability of the individuals appointed, 55 of these into the top three po uh, ranks of the South African Police Service. That needs to change in the police. That's a legislative reform initiative that needs to take place. And then we need to start looking at the dynamics of changing the culture of the South African Police Service, where good cops flourish and thrive and bad cops are scared of them as opposed to a situation where good cops keep their heads down and corrupt cops seem to act with impunity. So a big focus on improving the internal investigation units, the establishment of internal anti-corruption units, focusing on police officers and of course improving the disciplinary system as well as reward and recognition systems for those who report and tackle corruption in the police. In the NPA we need to see a situation where the NPR is held accountable for decisions it takes not to prosecute people. Year after year we see situations where the NPA announces that charges will not be pursued against a very powerful or well-connected individual despite there being seemingly prima facie evidence or evidence on the face of it that they were involved in some wrongdoing. A very high profile example of that is where the prosecuting authority decided to not prosecute the son of the pres former president Dudazani Zuma uh, despite an uh, inquiry stating that there was sufficient evidence only to change their mind later without anything else changing, showing or at least supporting the view that there was politics at play in the decision-making processes of the NPA. So ideally we would have another structure, possibly headed by a retired judge, that anybody who had an interest in a case as to why it was not being pursued could have that quickly reviewed by an independent judge to make sure that the decisions made by prosecutors are only on the facts and the law and not because of the social status or the political power of the person that should have been prosecuted. And then in the longer term we will see um, new policies such as the white paper on the police, we'll have the panel of experts report on Americana that should be coming out soon that look at whole scale police reform in the longer term about making sure that these criminal justice agencies are understanding that the most important objective to ensure they can really promote public safety in South Africa is that they gain public trust. No longer should we have a situation where police management, the top, of echelon, uh, top echelons of the South African Police Service tell us not to worry about the fact that the crime intelligence head has been suspended on full pay and bonuses for the last six years because this is an internal matter. Top leadership who are accountable who believe in transparency, believe in the values of our country and its democracy, will not say that anything is an internal matter. Every single statement they make, every decision they make, they must be able to justify it publicly and every opportunity to build trust in them must be taken. And telling us that 
These are internal matters is the surest way to ensure that we do not trust them. So we need to see a new caliber of leadership, but that leadership will have their work cut out to them. And then finally, of course, the judiciary, the media and civil society have to be on board of this. Police reform, reform of the NPA and the criminal justice system as a whole is not something that should be left to technocrats sitting in governments and offices in Pretoria. They need to be, uh, it needs to be a dynamic process where organizations who are interested in promoting uh, effective law, rule of law in South Africa are brought into the process where decisions about how to move forward are part of a lively discussion debate based on evidence before the public made available by the police, the NPA and other agencies. And that of course that there is a general support across society because of that, because the media are informed, civil society is involved, the public are involved, that we'll start to see a criminal justice system where it does its job and that no matter how powerful you are, if you are involved in wrongdoing and there's evidence, you can find yourself being held accountable. Then we'll have the single most important foundation for growing our economy and ensuring that everybody benefits in the future. So I hope that this is the kind of new dawn, or these are the kind of characteristics of the new dawn that we can, can, can expect um, moving forward. If we do, we will eventually as a nation achieve the vision that Nelson Mandela had for us.